Hey, how's it going? It's going well. This is my, uh, well, this is City University School. We're very excited that you could be visiting us today. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? Uh, you got a good one? Yeah, well, it's a Friday, and we always have a good one here at City University School, John. So I was wondering, did you get a chance to uh, look at the email I sent Jim yesterday? I sent you a list of questions. Yeah, you know, I saw the questions. Let yeah, me you tell can. you, you can ask me whatever you want. People can just start sending them to me. Yeah, sure, okay. Uh, well, do you have any, you know, do you have any words of wisdom for the kids to get started? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the biggest... Oh, you know, I'm looking at the... Uh... The stuff we got on in the front, oh, yeah. I like it. We got some Penn State gear. Absolutely. Yeah, my biggest words would just be uh, to really, you know, stick with your academics, to work hard in whatever you do, whatever you aspire to. That uh, honestly, whatever your dreams may be, whether it be football related, whether it's related to academics or just related to something else, just if you really put your heart and soul into your dreams, you can really accomplish whatever you set your mind to. Be my biggest, biggest message to you guys. Uh, all right, John. So one of our one of our first questions was, how difficult was it to, for you to balance your football commitments with your academic commitments? That question comes from Caitlin Black. Caitlin, wave. Caitlin's going on to sectionals for track. Caitlin came in first. Oh, yeah? Yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. congratulations. I, was, uh, I did track in high school. I was a state champion shot putter. It doesn't surprise any of us, Sean. But so the question was, how bit difficult was it for you to balance those academic commitments with your athletic commitments? You know, a lot of people ask me that question, but it wasn't that hard in that when you do what you love, that's all you want to do all day. And I love playing football. I love running around. I love hitting people. And I love doing math. And, you know, when you love doing that, I wake up in the morning and that's what I'm excited to do all day, my entire day, until I go to sleep. I wake up excited to do some math, excited to read books, excited to watch film, excited to get out on the field, run around. So when you really love what you do, you have more than enough time to accomplish what you want. John, another question that we had from Brandy Ayers. Brandy, raise your hand. Brandy's over here. She might be off camera. Uh, Brandy had a question. What was it like to teach classes at Penn State? Uh, I'd say the biggest thing is it was really nice to get a different view of, uh, of, of the university atmosphere, to be able to teach students, to be able to really inspire people and try to get university students to be passionate about mathematics. It was really a great experience for me. John, a lot of our kids here uh, were wondering, you know, what's it like to have a 4.0 at a school like Penn State University? You know, what can, what can you speak to, you know, the academics of a university like that and how hard it is to keep a 4.0? Yeah, let me tell you, Penn State's a great university. It's a great place to be. And uh, I was really lucky to be able to go to Penn State. And the biggest thing is I just really took my academics seriously. I mean, I knew I obviously... I came here, I had an opportunity to play for a football legend, but at the same time, it's important you get your degree because you never know which play can be your last. You never know when, you know, when the game's going to end for you, and you got to have that backup for the rest of your life. That's great. You know, that's exactly the type of thing we were hoping you'd say. So what was it your, this is a question from Alexis, who's in the back. She's one of our 11th graders. What was your original reaction when you learned that you'd won the William B. Campbell Trophy and the Sullivan Award? I guess it was two different reactions. <laughs> no, you know, it was pretty much the same reaction. I was, uh, I was just in awe. I was overjoyed, and it was, it was an honor to receive those awards as the culmination of my entire work throughout college, both on the field and in the classroom. And just a representation of all the people around me, my mother, my teachers, my professors, my coaches, just all the people who had really sacrificed for me. It was, it was a great experience. John, another question we had, do you want to go back to teaching after you're done uh, playing football? Or, you know, what are your plans for after the NFL? You know, after the NFL, I, uh, I plan to get my PhD in math. It's just something I'm passionate about. It's something I really love to do. But at the end of the day, I want to stay close to the game. So trying to stay close to football however I can, whether it's 
working for a pro team as, you know, someone in their analytics department, whether it's scouting, whether it's coaching, I think I need to stay close to the game. Cool. Well, that's great you want to stay close to your passion. John, another question that we had, uh, a lot of our students wanted to hear. This question comes from Jeremiah, who's one of our ninth graders. Jeremiah, give him a wave. Uh, Jeremiah wanted to know, who were the, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong question. Who pushed you to work hard, and who were the members of your support system that kept you, you know, that pushed you and really helped you get to the, uh, you know, the successes that you've had? You know, that's an easy one. That was, uh, that was my mother all the way. Let me tell you, my mom pushed me like no other when I was a kid. She, she sacrificed so much to make sure I had more opportunities than she did growing up. I mean, her, uh, neither of her parents went to college. She was the first one in her family to go to college, and she wanted to make sure that I did better than she did. So, uh, you know, let me tell you, I'd, you know, I'd go to school, and, you know, parents come in for go-to-school night. I'd have, you know, 95 averages, 96 averages in classes, my mom would be the only parent there complaining, asking why I don't have a hundred and what I'm doing wrong. So that's the type of mom I had and that's how she was in every aspect of my life. Just really pushing me to be the best. John, Always pushing my ceiling to be a little bit higher. When you were in ninth or 10th grade, how did you feel about your mom saying, you know, why don't you have a hundred? Why you only have a 96? Oh, I hated it. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not going to sit here and act like, oh, yeah, I was all about that. Believe me, I hated it, and I used to complain to her all the time, you know, why she was on me so much, why, you know, she wasn't happy with what I was doing, why she expected more out of me. But uh, now in hindsight, I really appreciated all she did for me to really help me reach my full potential and make the most of my opportunities. John, uh, another question we had was, uh, what made you decide you wanted to teach math while at Penn State? Because you must have had a very full schedule, you know, with uh, football to begin with. So what made you want to add that to your burden and uh, put that on top of your commitments you already had? You know, I, uh, I'm i really passionate about math and I love playing football. But one thing that I take very seriously is inspiring young people to do well academically because it's important. And for me to have the opportunity to teach students at Penn State and try to inspire them and get them passionate about mathematics, the sciences, or whatever subject they may be interested in, I really jumped at the opportunity. John, um, were there ever times that you thought about giving up football or giving up math to pursue you know, the other one that you would stick with? Or have you always been dedicated to both? That's a good question. Believe me, in any person's journey towards whatever your dream may be, there's going to be struggles, there's going to be pitfalls, there's going to be roadblocks, and there's going to be times where you really doubt yourself. When you really doubt, can I do this? And let me tell you, you really have to stick with whatever your goals and your dreams are, because those are the moments that really define you. How you react when you have an injury, how you react when you have some struggle, some setback, that's what really that finds you as a person, and that's what's going to make you successful. John, um, another question. What was it like to be co-captain of a Penn State football team? You know, we talked a lot about your math accomplishments, but from a football perspective, you know, what was it like to be co-captain at, you know, Beaver Stadium on a Saturday? It was, it was a great honor to be, uh, to be a captain of this Penn State football team. It's, it's a team full of guys that I love. Guys that I've really grown close with. Any of you guys who play sports, I'm sure you understand how you are with your teammates. That's how I am with mine. And just to be able to represent my teammates and be voted a captain by my teammates meant the world to me. John, have you always wanted to play football and get a PhD? Or what were your aspirations when you were a kid? Uh, you know, actually when I was little, when I was younger and younger, I wanted to be a uh, professional kickboxer. <laughs> it was just one of those things I wanted to do, but uh, let me tell you, when I started playing football and you know, put the helmet and the shoulder pads on and I started hitting people, let me tell you, I was hooked right away, man. It was, after that, I knew that I wanted to be a professional football player. Uh, all right, do we have any other questions? Let's raise our hands silently, those who have questions in the back. 
Oh, I can't hear you repeat it. Yeah, sure. So the kids read the Huffington Post article about you, and you know it started with you not being able to fit into the helmet. So the question was, how did it feel to not be able to fit into a helmet in middle school? Yeah, you know, it was a little demoralizing. Everyone else had a helmet that fit them. You know, they're hanging on equipment. I'm trying on the helmets, and uh, you know, the medium doesn't fit, the large doesn't fit, the XL doesn't fit. I look around, there's nothing. Uh oh. Smiling, right? 